Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Before I get into the actual lesson, I want to let you know that this video is part of a campaign called the Going Gold Campaign, spreading the word about the fact that September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. You will find links in the info box below uh, to find out more about that. And please watch this video all the way to the end because that's when I'm going to come back and tell you a little bit more about that. But let's go ahead and get into the lesson. I'm going to be showing you how to draw uh, two chibi characters, one giving the other a kiss on the cheek. And uh, what you see here is a perfect square. Use a ruler uh, if you want to follow along with this. And I've divided it in half. Those of you who don't really like to use guidelines, you can just sort of skip that part if you want to. But I'm going to begin uh, uh, drawing the two uh, uh, figures that are going to be in this particular pose. It's a little bit tricky uh, to draw, and that's why I thought if I put this uh, square here, uh, we will all be starting in the same location in a way, and it'll kind of help you to see um, uh, the proportions and so forth. So I'm drawing one of the two heads here. This is going to be this female character who's sort of leaning forward to give a kiss. And then over here, I'm drawing the uh, male character's uh, head. Uh, and so, you know, you could reverse this. I don't mean for everyone to follow. It doesn't necessarily have to be the girl kissing the boy on the cheek, right? It could be the dude kissing the girl on the cheek. Uh, you guys can replace this with your own characters, hopefully. Do your own thing with it. But um, uh, for my purposes, I'm beginning for draw by drawing these two heads. This one facing more straight toward us. This one is going to be more in profile. Let's go ahead and draw the um, actual pose of this girl uh, uh, leaning over to give uh, the boy a kiss. And this is her back. And the arm is going to go uh, kind of right across his the lower part of his cheek there so that um, it uh, obscures a little bit of it. And then uh, just go ahead and finish up that arm here going across. And her hand is going to be a little bit obscured from view. If you want to, you can go ahead and dash that in there. Um, let's go ahead and uh, using the bottom of her... Uh, head uh, w where this line meets here is a sort of a guideline. You can sort of come down here and uh, draw the rest of her body. Again, all in profile. She's leaning over and he's going to be sort of leaning straight, uh, or not leaning, but facing straight toward us in a somewhat comical fashion. Um, let me go ahead and start to indicate her hair. And uh, notice, as I often do with these manga drawings, I will uh, have the hair kind of float a little bit above the rest of the head. Uh, that's because in manga uh, characters, generally the hair is very full-bodied, uh, and uh, so you end up with that line not following so neatly across uh, your initial line of the head. I'm going to do just sort of real rough guidelines here that give me a sense of where the hair is uh, going to fall. And uh, maybe it's time for me to show you a little more of her face so that you can begin to really see what it is I'm drawing here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let's start up here and come down. And coming across like so, we are creating the profile of her nose. I wonder if I should, yeah, let me zoom in. Hang on, I'm going to zoom in so you can see this in greater detail. Okay, so we've zoomed in here and I'm starting to draw her profile. Like I said, we got the nose. Uh, coming out here, and a sort of an interesting thing is going to happen. Uh, and if you followed with my square uh, guideline, her the her kiss, her lips will actually almost come right at that midway point. Sort of a helpful guideline, and 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 uh, I'm sort of readjusting this um, chin, the line of the bottom of her chin. And what's going to happen as I erase here, instead of actually drawing her lips in a very fully defined way, um, I'm just going to allow the line to break a little bit right there, right where her uh, lips meet his cheek. And it's a sort of cute cart cartoony way of indicating the kiss without actually drawing the lips. Um, you are welcome, of course, to, to draw the lips. But um, I sort of like, and this is sort of based on what I see in a lot of manga illustrations, um, I sort of like when it's left to your imagination a little. It somehow looks cuter to me. Well, I'm drawing her eye here, uh, and her eyes uh, are closed. And so we're sort of seeing this in profile. Um, and just above, I'm drawing, giving her a little extra eyelash here. 
just above the eye. I'm going to put the um, eyebrow sort of slanted up at a at a slight angle. I often see this in, in kissing poses. There's something sort of tender and, um, I don't know, fragile, I guess, about that. I don't know, I'm having trouble getting the bottom of this head right. Doing a lot of erasing here today. And uh, adjusting that just a little further, um, you can kind of get a sense of that profile I was talking about. Now I'm going to move right along then and draw uh, the eyes of this boy character. And sort of the classic manga um, uh, kiss on the cheek scene that I think of always is the one where he is surprised. Like he didn't see this coming. Oh my goodness, she's kissing me on the cheek. And there's something sort of innocent and cute about that. So I'm going to give him these wide open eyes. Uh, kind of oval-shaped uh, irises, and uh, I'll go ahead and just put in the uh, the upper eyelash line and try to give him a very surprised look. So measuring some space across there, you could get at least one and a half, I'd say, of those irises um, before you draw this other iris over here because he's sort of looking straight at us and is not you know turning his head very much uh, you can use that um, horizontal line there as a guideline to make sure that these eyes are uh, pretty evenly placed you know the distance there and then the challenge of course is to reproduce that um, eyelash line in such a way that it mirrors the other one and I'm going to make his eyebrows go way up high, way up high on his head to show just how surprised, pleasantly surprised, right? Come on. He's loving it. Let's not kid ourselves. Um, and then, oh, you know, a lot of times, and this is kind of unusual, a lot of times a... Um, uh, chibi character has no nose at all, and um, you could, of course, do that as well with this character, but I've decided to add this, uh, just a little hint of a nose here, uh, so as to differentiate between the nose and this sort of open mouth that has this, oh my goodness, she's kissing me on the cheek, kind of a look. And I'm even going to add just a couple of lines there, the uh, folds of the eyelid. Um, and that kind of gives us the basics of this character's uh, head, her, you know, her head in profile, his uh, head facing straight toward us. I'm going to go ahead and drop in uh, his ear. And let's go ahead and do her ear over here. Now these are sort of the main uh, characteristics that I want to focus on. Um, and the, the rest of it uh, is maybe not so important in my view to follow along in a line by line way but if you want to feel free to follow along with each and every line that i draw i'm back to doing the brooklyn accent you know i see, actually the last couple of videos that i've done i have not done so much talking right they've been sort of shorter videos in fact i saw someone left a comment on my, one of my latest videos and it's like mark all your videos are short now you never talk anymore it's just like that Gautier song. You're someone that I used to know, man. <laughs> and I want to reassure you, I haven't changed. I'm still the mark that you used to know. Uh, but I did actually, I'll, ad I'll admit that uh, when my uh, playing card video went a little viral, I was a little nervous about going right back to a 18 minute video of me gabbing the whole time. I thought it might be a shock to the system. For some of those new viewers, like, oh man, boy, this guy sure loves to talk. Uh, so I thought I would sort of ease them into it, and this is probably going to be the first of the longer form uh, videos that I've done since that big playing card video. For those of you who don't know, that one really became my first viral video. Four million views uh, in quite a short period of time. Anyway, I'm drawing this guy's hair in, uh, as I often say, uh, but I have to say it again, I, uh, I'm not telling you line by line how to draw this particular hairstyle. I sort of like the idea of people taking these poses and changing them around and introducing their own characters rather than drawing, you know, every single line that I do and ending up with a whole bunch of drawings out there that look exactly like mine. Um... 
I know that I'm coming up against the top of uh, the video frame there, so I'm going to probably have to pull back to give you a, a wider view of that. But while we're in here, why don't I at least show you how you could uh, indicate some wrinkles on her um, coat here as she reaches across to give him that little smooch, that little smooch on the side of the cheek. I don't even know what this accent is supposed to sound like. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a terrible accent. That's what it sounds like, Mark. Stop doing it. <laughs> Just stop. Uh, I'll put in a few strands of his hair back here. And um, maybe a couple of wrinkles. Oh, we can't even see. I'm going to have to pull back. Let's pull back and then we'll uh, uh, carry on with drawing his pose and, and uh, more wrinkles on the clothes and so forth. So, time to refocus. All right, so we've got uh, her uh, pose pretty much in place, but we've got very little of his pose. So it's time to uh, get that done. And I'm going to begin by drawing one arm, uh, his arm kind of coming across like so the uh the elbow area is gonna reach um right around where that the bottom line of that square is if you want to use that as a guideline and i'm actually going to have his arms kind of crossing in front of uh each other to give this sort of add to this feeling of uh, insecurity and surprise and so forth that he's got going on there and I thought, what if he's wearing one of these sort of high school uniforms that has, uh, it looks like a suit coat kind of a deal. So I'm putting the lapel in like so. Um, but like I said, the, um, the elbows, we always get wrinkles around the elbows. Very often that's where the wrinkles form. So I'm going to draw uh, several lines in here for indicating those wrinkles. Um, she also is going to get some more wrinkles down here and some right around the waist. So these are sort of like the key places where the wrinkles form, even in a chibi drawing where you're sort of simplifying things a lot. Um, and maybe I get down here to the bottom of her coat and that'll be where I sort of end the drawing because we are reaching the end of the video frame there. Um, so I think what I'll do right now, oh, I got to finish off his coat. Sorry. I think what I'll do right now is, um, do some, uh, final line work with my, uh, trusty black Prismacolor. Um, but then try my best to squeeze in a little bit of real time shading at the end. You guys who've watched me a while is like, you always time lapse through the shading, man. How can we learn how to shade a drawing? If you always time lapse it, actually, my readers or my my viewers are, are not that angry with me. I certainly hope they're not. <laughs> I like to portray them as this angry mob with torches and pitchforks. Uh, in any case, I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish off the line work uh, with my trusty black Prismacolor, and then we will be back to do some uh, shading. Hopefully, a little bit of it in real time. All right, so we've got the final line work done. Let's see if we can squeeze in a little bit of uh, real-time shading here. I'm holding my pencil pretty low to the paper at a very low angle so as to, um, instead of getting sharp lines, sort of deliberately trying to get this, uh, you know, very wide tone uh, forming by way of just the repetitive um, strokes of the pencil against the page. This is just, you know, one of my techniques that I always switch this way. And then when I'm trying to do detail, you know, I come at a much sharper angle. Um, and uh, so I find that the way you hold the pencil, the angle that the, the lead of the pencil is hitting the page um, is pretty important in terms of what kind of line you're going to get. And some, you know, sometimes like when you're shading, like this, you definitely want not a precision, not a very sharp, precise line, but this very uh, kind of foggy, uh, imprecise line that creates a very nice even tone. And uh, what I want to do here is uh, take just one section uh, that will be where I imagine the highlight being. I'm using my eraser to sort of erase back in here. Very often, especially with these chibi uh, cartoon uh, characters, you'll see a very simple uh, line like that going right across um, for uh, indicating some sort of a 
<clears throat> highlight, you know, like shimmer makes the hair look shiny. And uh, even with uh, more realistic looking drawings, you'll very often see just a simple kind of minimalist line like that. Now, I'm going to be working into this uh, hair a lot more uh, later on probably as I uh, finish up the drawing, but you've kind of got the basics of it. You can see that I first put down, you know, my best attempt at an even tone, and then uh, from there I uh, erased away the highlight, and then what I do is sort of darken up the lower part of it, and then sometimes I will also darken up the uh, upper edge just a touch, and that I find adds to the uh, feeling of three-dimensionality. I'll be pr doing pretty much the same thing with his hair, so I don't think it's necessary for me to do that part of it in real time. But how about if I switch over here, this is a little unorthodox, but I want you to get the idea of how um, shading in his clothing uh, can be something that I do in response to the fact that her arm is leaning over in front of him. Uh, right, right across to, to plant that little smooch, that little smooch on his cheek. When, am I doing like a southern accent? Because that's probably really offensive to my su southern viewers. I mean, is it, isn't it enough that I've offended the people of Brooklyn with this terrible Brooklyn accent? What? I'm going to alienate the south now? Uh, but what I'm doing here, apart from my ridiculous accents, is adding more and more darkness right here in this upper area, and this uh, creates the feeling of a, a shadow that is created by her arm. And you will see, again, I think I'm going to have to, you know, kick it into time lapse um, to, to keep this video at a reasonable length. But um, this at least gives you one little technique here of uh, uh, using shading underneath an arm or, or whatever object it is to, to help it pop, make it look more three-dimensional. So let's go ahead then and kick it into time-lapse to finish off the shading, and I'll be back with one or two final touches that will finish off this drawing. All right, well, I finished up the shading there. Like I said, there's a few more things I want to add here to finish off the drawing. One of them is I just like to add a, a few lines like this that uh, accentuate the feeling of surprise. Uh, on his uh, part, and so you can sort of darken those in a little if you like. And then the last thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to have to do this in time-lapse, is um, a katakana sound effect here in Japanese, the sound effect for the, uh, the kiss itself. It has its own sound effect, and the sound effect is choo! So I'm going to go ahead and draw that in Japanese, or, you know, in the katakana. And I do mean draw. I'm not actually writing these uh, katakana properly. I'm kind of drawing them almost like a, uh, uh, a picture of some kind. But I'll do that in time lapse and be right back. All right, well, I've done the drawing, I've done the sound effect, so I'm finished. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm not really finished. I couldn't be finished if I haven't drawn the blushies. Gotta have blushies. Um, I don't know if she's all that shy, but uh, certainly she's feeling some intense emotion. But not as intense as this guy, oh yeah. He's going red in the face. Out of shock, embarrassment, and a certain degree of great pleasure. Um, but that kind of ends this drawing. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. But I do want to sort of uh, follow up on what I said at the beginning of the video. Uh, the woman who got in touch with me, her name is Elizabeth Struck, and these are her words that she wrote to me in uh, her email. She said, Our goal is to make the gold cancer ribbon as popular as pink has become for breast cancer. We hope uh, as it becomes more popular, uh, this area will get more funding. More funding means more research and a possible cure. So please remember, September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, and I hope you will uh, click on those links. Check out the uh, YouTube video channel uh, that Elizabeth has created there for the Going Gold campaign. Also, please go over to her Facebook page and click like. That is something that you can do that, believe it or not, really does help. I think the more likes that someone gets on Facebook, um, the more uh, support they can get, the more uh, media attention they can get over time and different things like that. So let's go ahead, though, and lay down this pencil. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Video. I certainly enjoyed making it for you, and I'll be back with another one real soon.